Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're right in the middle of doing a website project. It was going to be a, a mobile first, responsive uh, site. And I wanted to take advantage of the CSS grid. We're looking at a great article about the CSS grid. And it's on CSS tricks. So a lot of credit goes here. This is where I learned how to understand the grid. I'm not going to show you everything that's on this article, so you're going to want to look at it. I'm taking one approach I learned from it. Another thing I'm doing is I want to give credit to this Zen Grids Limitless Layouts. It's a grid system. Okay. Now, I'm not looking at any of their code. I just found this image that they applied here. Here it is on the browser. And the reason why I applied it is because here we have an example of a lot of different layouts using a general sort of similarity in the layout. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some existing layouts um, that I've created. I have the code for doing two of the layouts. You will be able to look at all the code, pause the video, get the code out, uh, test it. And then I'm going to show you how I take the existing grid and then build yet another layout and show you just how easy it is to create multiple layouts in one site using the same general basic grid design. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about how I go about choosing a grid, not really choosing a grid, but how I go about planning and mapping out how am I going to design this grid on the site. So let's say I've been given um, one of these uh, grids and I have to reproduce the layout on my website. So I'm going to go into Photoshop just to show you what I did. I use these grid lines here to sort of put a line in between each of the grid elements, the grid areas. And um, what you'll notice is it, this is sort of a three by three grid. Uh, however, if you scroll down and look at some of the others, you'll see those grid lines don't quite line up on some of these other grid models. So I came to the conclusion, basic, basically this is based on Bootstrap, which uses a 12 column grid. That 12 columns is pretty good. And the reason why is uh, you'll see uh, two, like you'll see there are two elements here. If you look at it in a way, you sort of have a three by three. Well, 12 is evenly divisible by three. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see this bottom row it has four grid elements. And uh, 12 is evenly divisible by 4 as well, and it's also evenly divisible by 2. And so there's a lot of possibilities for creating using sort of a 12-column grid. But I use these grid lines to help also map out another aspect you're going to see in just a moment. So let's look at the code that I use to create this particular layout. Here's my Atom editor. And uh, my project structure is I have this page called layout1.html and layout2. And we're going to look at the differences between them in just a moment. Uh, layout1, oh, I keep doing that. Layout1 is over on the left. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this for now. And I just want to focus in on the code. A couple things you need to do is because we're doing this uh, mobile first uh, and a responsive layout, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure you have this meta tag here. And this sets an initial scale. And just for your reference, I actually have three style sheets here. One is designed to create the navigation bar. One is designed for just general styles like colors, typography. And then one is designed for layout. And this, this link to the layout, is the one that we're going to focus on and for doing the grid. I also have linked to a Google font. And you can find out how to do this stuff in a lot of other places. And I want to focus on the HTML structure inside the body. And the way the grid works, it's very similar to Flexbox. So if you've ever done Flexbox, you'll note that this is, there's some similarities. You have a parent element and you have child elements. The parent is the div of the class of container. This is the thing we apply the grid to and the overall structure of the grid. And then we're going to use all of these child elements to sort of place within the grid into various grid areas. So your two big keywords for today are the grid, grid areas. I'll add more as we go. And so we came up, I came up with names for these and I gave them a class. And if you go over here, uh, I have top left 
and I have top right, and then I have middle right, which is this grid over here, and then I have bottom left and bottom right. So I just kind of generally focused on top, middle, bottom, going from top to bottom, and then left to right, you know, and basically, was it in the left, in the right? If there's something's in the center, I'll put it in, that it's in the center. So that's kind of the way I come about naming these. Now these are all grid areas, and this video is not necessarily about the best names for everything, but it's just one way to get into this idea. Okay, so that's the HTML, and let me just show you what's inside of every HTML. All I did was insert a header two, and I did that in these header twos just to sort of label these so you can see where they all go. And let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like here. And obviously I didn't give it that black background and I gave it rounded corners and things like that. I'm not doing this to make it a really beautiful design, but just more to crank out a grid and just have something we can look at. Okay, so you can see where these line up. So if you want to, I highly recommend you pause the code, you get your, your container and all the children div here. I'll wait for it. Well, in case you were wondering and you've come back, uh, you might want to also pause and take a look at the elements in the head. And I'm not going to focus on navigation or general. That's going to be up to you. I'll let you decide how you do it. And over on the right hand side, I have my layout.css. Now what I did for layout, I created uh, what's called a mobile first approach where I create styles just in general where I'm giving things. Uh, I am making this a grid but I'm not really applying any grid elements uh, to my container in the mobile view, and we'll talk about that later. Um, I just gave some general styles to the container, and because I've been working on a website, I have other things like header, article, sidebar, uh, that is really not, we're not even gonna address any of that code, so you can just skip that part if you want. But if you wanna pause the video, now's a good time to pause it and add some style. Okay, I'm guessing you're back now. So I'm gonna scroll down and we're gonna apply the first breakpoints. So we're gonna say anything that's 700 pixels wide or wider, we're gonna now add that layout that we had before. So in order to do that, we set app media and we say it's only screen and if there's a minimum width of 700 pixels. Okay, so if they, we've met our minimum width, we're gonna go ahead and apply our grid setup. Now, honestly, if you're gonna do any grid stuff in the mobile design, you should move all of this into that above slot, okay? I'm not gonna do it for now, but I do recommend any of this stuff here. What did we do here? What we did is we targeted the classes that are our children of the grid, okay? So top left, top right, we just name them in CSS. Our CSS, in order for the grid to work, we must uh, connect, basically, the element with the grid area, okay? So these are the different areas in our grid. So the name you put here, um, you can give it different names than what the class is, but I've discovered, for me, it makes it easier if it's the same name. Uh, it's less likely for me to be confused and give it the wrong grid area name, okay? So this makes more sense down below in just a moment. So these are actually the only thing I do to the children at this point. If top left, I wanted to give it a different background color, I could add it in here, but I'm not going to for now. I'm gonna to go to the container and here's where the real good grid stuff is happening. This is where magic is happening. Let's just kind of explain it. I just gave it a, a random height for now. We'll deal with height later. And we need to set the grid template columns and the grid template rows. There's a great function called repeat. Okay, so I wanna talk about that repeat function, but kind of before I do, let me just uh, tell you a little story. Um, in this code here, I forgot one little aspect about the grid template columns and rows, and that has to do with the repeat function. The repeat uh, first number here has to do with how many grid lines there they are. And repeat just means whatever we're doing, we're just gonna do this however many times we tell it to repeat. So we wanna repeat our grid lines and we're giving it auto width and then we're just kinda like automatically stretching them out um, full width of the screen. And columns, we're kinda doing the same thing. Autoed will just be automatically, however high the content is. 
and we're repeating three grid lines. Let's uh, talk about the complete guide to grid because one of the things I want to show you is that this uh, graphic that CSS Tricks has uh, shows you sort of this grid and this far left side of the screen is actually the first grid line. Far right is the last grid line. So if we really want four columns, let's take a look at this for example. We have one, two, three, four, five columns here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of these grid lines. So in order to create 12 columns, we technically have to make this 13. Um, interestingly enough, we'd have to do the same thing for repeats. We do that as repeat four. I wanted to make sure you understand that because this can lead to confusion. Interestingly enough, the grid is pretty darn flexible and can account for that. Um, so uh, I'm actually recording this after the fact and coming back. And so I'm gonna put it back to where it was, but I just want you to know this is more complex than you might think it is. Um, and if you wanna get into pixel perfect, understand that the repeat function has to do with the number of grid lines. Since everything works okay, I'm gonna leave it back where I had it originally. Everything else is based off of that. The other thing I did is change height from height to min height. Setting it to min height means that it will at least be 500 pixels tall. And then um, if it expands beyond that, it will stretch. Uh, by making it min height, if there's a little less content that's in there, it'll still expand to be 500 pixels tall. I kind of like that, but you have all the option in the world. This is unnecessary setting height at all. You can just leave that alone or you can set it and you can even individually set grid template rows. There's a lot more you can do. Then we set the grid template areas. This is where all of the layout actually happens. Okay. So there's a couple rules we need to do. Rule number one. Okay. Every row in your grid needs to be in quotation marks. We call that a string. And you don't have to put each one on its own line, but it's going to make it more readable because you can kind of see top to bottom how this layout is. Rule number two, okay, the names you give here need to correspond with the grid areas in CSS. They have no connection to the class over here except for through this code up here. Another thing you need to know is if you have, th you identify three grid areas in the top row, there needs to be three on all remaining rows. You can't change the number or it will break the layout. Okay, so the, it's kind of like a table in that respect. You need to make sure your columns match. Now, what's cool is if you want it to span across two thirds of the set, the 12 columns, all you have to do is identify three columns and name top left twice. So what we're saying is top left, top left, that's two thirds of the top row. Top right is one third of the top row. And now we want the top left to span down to the second row. So we also write top left and top left. Now, the way the grid works is it works in rectangles. So you couldn't make like an L shape. We can't play Tetris by giving it something else. I could try, but I'm guessing it's gonna break everything. Maybe for fun, replace this top left with a dot. See what happens, okay. Anyway, bottom row, bottom left, bottom right, bottom right means the bottom left takes up one third and these two bottom rights take up two thirds. Uh, the other thing is not only do they all have to have the same number, but if you give it 12 columns, uh, you do wanna make sure that um, you pick a number of these grid areas that will be that 12 will be evenly divisible by okay so that that'll help things out we added a gap between our columns we added a gap between our rows and then we stretched our content to stretch top to bottom left to right i believe uh, one of these is top to bottom one's left to right i think this was top to bottom all right let's take a look one more time that's what it produces now let's take a look at the difference between layout number one and I'm gonna show you layout number two. So layout number two, I believe is over here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Layout two, okay. And let's just break this down. Layout two has a different set of child elements to the container. 
So the big difference between layout one and layout two, other than all of the children now are different, is that we also add a second class called layout two. So this helps us to target this particular container. It's a unique one from the other container. So it's container space layout two. Notice we have a top left, top right, and we have a bottom one, bottom two, bottom three, bottom four. Now let's go take a look at that layout style sheet that we created. I'm just gonna move this over here so you can see the relationship of layout two. Now, the only difference between the container and layout two is the grid template areas. Everything else is the same. So now we apply, and it's really good to focus on the difference between the HTML and the difference between the CSS. This is the only thing we need to adjust. So we want the top left, top left. This takes up the, uh, basically, the left half of the screen, and top right takes up the right half. Top left also takes the first two rows, top right, first two rows, and then the bottom, we have four separate ones. So they all add up to four on each row, and let's take a look at what it looks like when we display it. So that's layout two. Okay. It was actually not too terribly difficult. Um, it's not a lot of change. So now that you see how I've done it for two, in my next tab, I wanna show you how to now take one of these layouts and create a third layout from, basically, we're just gonna take layout two and save it as layout three. Never underestimate the power of file save as. File save as. I, by the way, I select, make sure I'm clicked in layout two. I choose file, I do save layout. The, I do save as. I can't, I can't speak today. Change the two to a three. There we go. All right, what's different about this? Let's take a look at the other grid that we're going to do. Uh, we're gonna do this one on the top over here. We've got, once again, three rows. We're gonna have a top left, a top right. The left is gonna be too wide. Then we're gonna have a middle left and a middle right or lower right big. I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. I'll just call it right, middle right. Uh, but it's gonna take up two rows. And then um, after that one, I just have one more to do, which is bottom left. So I go into layout uh, two, and I'm gonna change that from layout two to layout three in here. And then we're gonna just delete what we need to. I'm gonna get rid of anything referring to big, small, whatever. So we have a top left and we have a top right. Top left is gonna take up two spots. Top right is going to just take up one. Um, then we're gonna have a middle left. And then I'll go ahead and change that in here. Try not to just mess everything up. Middle left and bottom left. That's it, right? Top left, top right, middle left. Oh, middle right, and then bottom left. I'll just cut that out and move it over here. And it'll be middle. Right, bottom left, that's it. Right, I think I got it. Just verify that. There's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We have top left, top right, middle left, middle right, bottom left. Okay, so this is good. Uh, right now, this doesn't fit, so I'm gonna just do the text under here. It's gonna be confusing, middle right. And then we have bottom left. Okay, save my changes. HTML is Done. If I want to, I can give it a header later, but this is layout two. Let's just go ahead and do that. So it, it's pretty, you know what? I'm gonna wait, I'm just gonna wait. All right, so now we have, uh, just like we did with container layout three, we're gonna use the same grid, use the same gaps, use the same aligned content. Um, I am gonna change one thing about this. Instead of height, set it to minimum height of 500. And the reason why is if you don't set the height, then it won't stretch top to bottom. So like, it'll look like that. 
But if you do at least a minimum height, it'll stretch everything out. It's just a little easier to look at. If your text gets larger, it'll expand beyond 500 pixels. But if it's less, it'll at least fill it out to that height. So I think a min height is a safe way to go. And it kind of gives us the grid, but allows it to be somewhat flexible. So all we have to do is basically use the same thing we did here. But before we go here, I should go up here again and let's review. Do we have a top left? Yes. Is it named top left? Sure. Top right, we got one. Middle left? No. We have a middle right, but we don't have a middle left. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. Oops, I'm going to undo that. Control C. I'm going to paste. Hit enter. Middle right. Middle left. Middle left. Very important that you tie these all together. And middle right, bottom left. Do we have a bottom left? Yes, we have a bottom left. We have a middle right. We have a middle left. We have a top right. Okay, so we're good. Uh, just make sure if you introduce any new of these classes, you got to define the grid area before you do the container. All right, now we'll do this. So it's dot container dot layout three. And then we're going to do the grid template areas. And we're going to hit enter just so I put it each. I like to put each on its own row, make it more readable. Okay, so we're gonna do top left, and we're gonna do that twice, top left, because we want it to be two thirds, and then we're gonna do a top right. And as of now, we have it set three columns, right? Evenly divisible by 12, so we're good. Middle left, and then we could put middle dash right. Now I'm gonna use this a lot, so I'm just gonna copy that. Control C, space, paste. Okay, go to the final row, and then we're gonna do a bottom left. And we're gonna do a middle right, space, middle right. And whoa, what just happened there? Middle right. <laughs> I had two curses at once. I have no idea how that happened. Let's just see if this works. Both should be saved. I should now see a layout three. I click on here, let's load it up. There we go, top left, top right, middle left, middle right, bottom left. Bam, there's our grid. And now you can see endless possibilities. And all you really need to do is target your HTML. You can use classes, you can ID, use IDs, whatever selector you want. Notice these are all direct children of the container. That's how this works, just like the Flexbox does that too. You need to create your grid areas here so you can populate them using grid template areas. You set your min height if you wanna at least have it a certain height. And then you set your columns using repeat. You set your rows using repeat. I like everything automatic, so it's more flexible. But if we needed to make everything pixel perfect, there's all kinds of information on the article. And let's just finish with this article. Um, under CSS tricks, um, dot com, it's just a complete guide to grid. Google it. It's been updated really recently. Yesterday it got updated. So you take a look at it and any information you need, you got it in here. Um, the container is the parent. The children were all those things where you had the grid area. There's many more areas, many more things that you can do to set up your grid. I'm gonna let you explore. I just wanted you to see just how powerful this grid model is. It is awesome. It is flexible. It allows you to do all kinds of cool layouts. And if you've done web design for a long time, you will appreciate just how little effort it is once you have a good grid set up to just expand and go hog wild. All right, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.